Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's first not have a battery here. Let's just say it's a resistor, 10 ohms, and then let's say this rod is a slidable rod. It can slide along the rails of this circuit. So then it's a slidable. Let's say it's going to the right at uh, 5 meters per second. That's pretty fast. So 5 meters per second. Right, and then let's say this distance here is um, 40 centimeters. Um, and let's say there's a magnetic field in this, in this whole region, there's a magnetic field that is uh, into the board. This is almost like a circuit problem combined with a magnetic field problem. Okay, so now analyze this circuit and tell me what the current is going to be in the 10 ohm resistor, in the 5 ohm resistor, and then I'm going to give this slidable rod some internal resistance. So this one is going to have some resistance. Let's say its resistance is um, 8 ohms. So then tell me the current in here, the current in here, and the current in there. Okay. So as this is sliding to the right. So it's a kind of a cool problem here. Um, let's see here, how do we analyze that? So on the right side, analyze what's happening on the right side. I mean, on the left side, like this. As this is sliding to the right, its area is increasing, right? Uh, so if the field is into the board, what kind of current is going to be induced? What kind of current is going to be induced in this uh, loop? So I'm analyzing the left side here. So if the field is into the board and the area is increasing, right? So the kind of current that should be induced there is to try to fight against that. So it should be, if the field is into the board, you should try to fight against that. So a counterclockwise current should be induced, you see, like this. Why? Because a counterclockwise current will create a field out of the board and it's going to try to fight against the 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 field which is into the board and it's increasing you see so then we can say let's calculate the emf induced in this coil negative n uh, d by dt ba right so then the strength of the b field has to be given to you let's say it's a strong b field to tesla right so then the B field itself is not increasing, and the number of turns is just one, right? So this is just one, B is uh, just two, so DA, DT, right? So the only thing that's increasing is the area. So then uh, how do we calculate the area? Let's see here. The area is the length of this, which is X. We don't know the length of that and then times the width, which is the 0.4 meters. 0.4 meters, right? So the area is negative two d by dt, and then the area is um, x, 0.4 times x. Oh, actually the B field is negative two Teslas, right? Because it's into the board. So technically it's negative two, negative two. So to be more correct with the signs. So you have negative from Faraday's law, right? This, remember this was Lenz's law. Then the B field is negative two, and then they cancel and give you positive two. 
right? And then you're going to have your EMF is going to be uh, 2 times 0 0.4, 0 0.8 times dx dt. And then dx dt is what? The rate at which the, the rod is sliding, you see? dx dt, so it's 5. Okay, so then that's going to be 4 volts. Okay, so 4 volts of EMF is produced in this loop. 4 volts, and it's positive. Well, what does positive mean? You will drive the current to be counterclockwise, you see? So what you can do is you can replace this. It's going to have the same effect as if there was a, a five volt battery. Imagine there was a five volt battery like this, which was pushing current counterclockwise. So facing this way, you see, it's going to act like that. Uh, so then this rod is a eight ohm rod. 8 ohm, and this is a 10 ohm, 8 ohm. Now let's analyze the right side. Then we'll have a circuit uh, like a Kirchhoff's loop circuit uh, going on. So this is the left, left side. It's kind of an interesting approach to this problem, but this is, the, this is the way to solve this. So now the right side, you're going to have a look at this. And this is going in, right? The field is in. What do we expect should happen here? Well, the field is into the board, but the area is decreasing. So the current that's induced should be what? It should try to help the, this field, right? So it should, the current should create the field into the board you see, to try to help it because you're, it's being reduced, cr crunched down, right? So it sh I expect the answer to be like this, which is clockwise. So the current induced in the right side, I expect it to be clockwise, which is negative, right? But now let's do the actual equation. EMF is... Uh, negative n d by dt b a and then of course n is one b is negative two again and then the emf is going to be negative negative is going to cancel two d by dt and then the area is going to be x times 0 0.4 again 0.4 x you see that but look at what happens Two times 0.4, so then that's 0.8. And the x dt is what? The x dt is negative 5 because it's closing in. The, this length is reducing. So on the right side, the length is reducing. And then on the left side, the length is increasing. So you see, that's where you get the extra negative. The x dt is going to be negative 5. And that's going to be negative 4 volts, right? Oh, no, uh, is that right? Yeah, negative 4 volts. Why did I write 5 volts for the other one? 0.8 times 5 is 4 volts. Oh, no, this should have been 4 volts. 4 volts, yeah. Okay, so now negative 4 volts, the negative means it is a clockwise current. Yep. So now what kind of battery can we replace that by? We have here uh, 5 ohm. So what kind of battery should I replace that by? What kind of battery would push the current this way? Then it would be a battery that has the negative there, right? In other words, you're saying it behaves as if there's a battery with the negative here and the positive there. That's four volts. 
that wants to push the current this way. So the two batteries are uh, opposing each other. They're, both of them are this way. One wants to get the current to go this way. Oh, uh, let's see here. One wants to get the current this way to be clockwise. And then this one wants to get the current to be counterclockwise. Oh, actually, the, here the currents are going to add up. They're going to come like this, and they're going to add up. Then it's going to go like that. So counterclockwise, uh, and then this one clockwise. Yeah, actually, here they actually, the, the currents they create actually add up. Hmm, that's interesting. So then you have another circuit here, 4 volts. Okay, now you do the Kirchhoff's loop uh, equations. You could say uh, this call it I1, call this guy I2, and then call this guy I1 minus I2, right? Then analyze those, analyze those loops. I'm gonna analyze them this way since it makes it easier because the battery is facing that way. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna gain four volts. Then I'm going to come, I'm going to go across the resistor, I'm going to lose 8I2, right? Then I'm going to go like that, this is I1, right? So don't forget that chapter here, I1, negative 8I2, negative 10I1, and that's equal to zero. So then that's one of the loops. 10, I1. It's cool how that chapter came in here, right, into this chapter. So it's all mixed up. Right, and then now we have uh, do this loop. I could, uh, yeah, I could go this way if I want. Yeah, I could start here, go this way, like that. So start here, gain four. Let's write it here, gain four. And then go this way, lose 8i2 again. Right, and then this way, you're going against the current. See, so the current is coming this way, i1 minus i2. So then you gain four, lose eight I two, then go against the current. So you gain five I one minus I two. See the two circuits are not symmetric because this is a five ohm and this is a 10 ohm resistor. So that's gonna make a difference. So four minus eight I two plus five I one minus I two, and that's equal to zero. So then you're going to have 4 is equal to 8i2 minus 5i1 minus i2. And now you're going to have, we could put that here, 4 is equal to uh, negative 5i1. And then 5i2 plus 8i2. Right, 5i2 plus 8i2, 13i2. I guess I could do this without the ti, right? Because it's an easy one. I could double this and make it multiply everything by 2. So I have uh, 8 is equal to negative 10i1 plus 26i2. Then I could add that to this guy, right? So if, I, if it's something I can quickly do by hand, why not? So 8 is negative 10 I1 plus 26 I2. Then add 8 to 4, and I get 12. Add 10 I1 to negative 10 I1, it cancels. Then 8 to 26 is 34. There you have it. I calculated I2. Twelve over 34.353 apps. 
Okay, so that's the current in the rod, in the sliding rod for 353 amps. Then you could put that into, I guess, any one of these other ones and solve for I1. So you could say eight times I2, multiply this answer by eight, right? Then subtract four from that. So um, I'm gonna do minus four, take the inverse of it. So then four minus eight I2 and then divide that by 10. So I1 is gonna be 0.118 amps. So that means the current here is gonna be 0.118 and then this is gonna be 0.353. And of course this one is gonna be I1 minus I2. Uh, so this minus this. 0.118 minus 0.353. So point I1 minus I2 is negative 0.235. So literally means that the current is actually coming, uh, the current is actually coming this way. So you see both currents are coming this way. They're adding up. So you get here 0.235 amps. And then this one, 0.118 amps. They're coming this way and then they're adding up in here. Now, if you really analyze what's gonna happen to this sliding rod, right? If it's going five meters per second, is it gonna continue going at that speed? In reality, not really, unless someone is dragging it kind of at that speed. Because if you just kind of give it a kick and let it just slide by itself at five meters per second, it's, gonna, it's not gonna maintain that speed. Notice what's gonna happen. Because there is current in it going up, what's gonna, uh, what's gonna uh, B field, what is the B field gonna do to it? Right, the B field is into the board, right? So remember the equation, F is equal to I L crossed into B. Right, so then if there's current going up, what's gonna be the force on that sliding rod due to the magnetic field, right? Uh, the I is up this way, and then that crossed into the B field, what's the force, the net force? This is very crucial, guys. My God, I'm getting goosebumps here. Nature is fighting against you, right? Look at that. I crossed into B, the force is to the left. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. So that force is gonna fight against the motion of that rod. So what's gonna be the magnitude of that force? I, L, B, I is gonna be the point, what was it? The point three, five, three amps. And then the L is, was the length of the rod, which was what, uh, 40 centimeters, right? 0.4 meters, and then the B field was what? Um, uh, two Teslas, right? That's a pretty considerable force. So then what's gonna happen? That's gonna cause the, the speed to decelerate, right? Uh, so the speed, it doesn't stay five. That force causes the speed to go from five to four to three. But of course, as it's decelerating, what's happening to the current in the wire? Uh, the current, remember the current depends on the velocity with which it's going. So if the velocity is no longer five, 
the the EMF induced is no longer four. You see, so then you see how there's a um, how should I say there is a dependency of the current induced on the velocity. So the force causes the velocity to go down, which causes the current induced to go down, which causes the force to go down. So the the, the rod doesn't immediately abruptly stop it kind of asymptotically slows down slows down slows down until the final speed of the rod is zero of course i'm assuming that the circuit is very very long like that you see so the rod doesn't achieve zero velocity right away it's like asymptotically reaches zero but you see what's happening to the direction of the current the direction of the current in the rod is such that the force on the rod fights against the motion of the rod. Cool, huh? Have you seen a problem like that, Daniel, with the sliding rod? Uh, nope, <laughs> not really. And you see how the force on the rod fights against its motion, right? Yeah. Which is, which is just another form of saying Lenz's law. Pretty much goes back to Lenz's law, right? So now, um, if there were batteries in the original problem, we could handle that too. We could say, let there be random batteries here. Let's say eight volts facing up, and maybe there might be a battery here, three volts facing down. How would that change the problem if there were already batteries on the two sides? Well, what we would do is the battery that is this way, once we determine that the effect of the sliding rod is to create two batteries, then we would say those batteries are in series with that battery. So imagine if there was an eight volt battery facing up right there, and then there's a four volt battery facing down. You see? So then what's the effect of that? Uh, then the effect of that is for it to be a four volt battery facing up. You see? It's like putting two batteries opposite each other. Um, so then you can say, okay, it's got the effect of having a four volt battery this way. facing up. Okay, now here, this four volt battery is facing down. And now if there's already a three volt battery facing down, you see? So it all depends how these are facing and what their magnitudes are. So if there's a three volt battery facing down, this would be a seven volt battery. Okay, now you could do Kirchhoff's loops again with a seven volt battery facing down and a four volt battery facing up. Do your loops, calculate I1 and I2, and then whatever I2 uh, comes up. Uh, this time it might not come up this way, it might come down uh, because of what the external battery is doing, you see? So it depends on what this magnitude is and what this magnitude is. You might get a current here that's actually going down. Uh, but that's because the battery is forcing it, you see. So you see how to handle that? If there's a battery there, just add those batteries to the batteries that are created by the, the effect of the sliding rod. Okay, cool.